Hey guys, I often get asked, how can I stop overreacting? Life triggers me and this is happening and people do that and this is what happened. How do I stop, you know, this, this feeling that just comes out automatically and takes the best of me? Yeah? And I think this is such an important question because when we overreact or when we react and when we emotionally lose control of how we feel and we let our emotion take the best of us well what really happens is that when emotion or negative emotion goes up you could say that your intellect goes down because you, your ability to rationalize is between that emotion so it's hard to feel and to think greater than how you feel so now you end up doing stuff that makes you even more angry makes you even more scared it makes you even more panicked and so you st stay stuck in that loop so we want to get outside of that loop so we can choose a greater response so we can choose a better solution so we can choose not to waste our energy on what people say or do or because maybe it doesn't even matter at the end of the day right maybe you you're better off doing something that you actually care about or use your energy in a different way because we know that energy is our most important currency and emotion is how we speak to the quantum field, to God or to, to the universe and we know that what we emit out will come back to us. And so what you see today is that when people overreact, they become addicted to those reactions and it's unconscious, right? So we all know somebody who's angry, and you know, the, the angry person who no matter what happened, they'll find a way to be pissed off or frustrated or to complain about something or to blame someone. Because the more we allow those emotions or that, <clears throat> sorry, that emotional state to continue to run wild, the more we become that person, the more that emotion gets fed on, the more energy we give, the more the patterns grows. And now we start to look for things in our environment unconsciously to reaffirm how we feel. So we need to be very emotionally aware of how we feel so that we can actually start to change this and resolve those things. So, you know, to give you an example of what may happen, like yesterday morning, uh, last night actually, what is what happened? Very silly situation, right? Because I, just like everybody else, I react as well. The question is not, uh, is it bad to react? That's not, it's okay to react, it's life. But the question is, how long are you gonna keep on reacting? So I go down and there's a delivery, uh, food delivery for me, right? So I go down and Right in front of the, the condo's entrance, there is, for whatever reason, there was a lot of people. They were picking up food, talking with other people, saying goodbyes to their friend. And it was just so clustered that was, I couldn't go through. And in that moment, in one second, I felt this, like, this frustration. Like, what, you know, and that, that feeling of feeling like saying, like, I felt like saying, what the fuck is everybody here? You know, just, just fucking move on. Talk there or do what? So whatever happened that triggered that, that frustration in me made me want to verbally attack other people so that I can get my own way. Now, obviously, I didn't react. I, I felt the frustration, but I didn't verbally say it, right? Because I caught that frustration. I was like, okay, that's, that's not the way I want to go, and I moved on. But here's what happened in, in most people's lives. This is you, metaphorically speaking, of course. You could say that this is a glass of water, and this is another person, an environment, or something that, that is happening, right? And so when, when it's happening with you, around you, or you know, you're interacting with a person, you could say that that, that sp little spoon is going around and is, is interacting with you. And as you can see, as it's interacting with you, it's creating, releasing something that is darkening the essence of you inside your water, you, the, the sediment, the dirt, is that emotional reaction that's being stirred, that's being triggered inside of you. And that's when you overreact because we always act based on how we feel. Yeah? So what most people say is, say is that, well, I feel this way, I reacted this way because they pissed me off, because, you know, that car was driving too slow, because, you know, my boss is a dick, because, you know, the government did that or because whatever right so we tend to usually blame blame the spoon for the internal reaction emotional reaction that we have within us yeah but 
is a question for you. Before, before the spoon went into the water, before you interacted with that person or that thing or that environment, the sediment, the dirt, that emotional residue was already between you. And you could say that the spoon is only something that triggered it and only brought up something that was already inside of you, waiting to be triggered. So, we cannot blame people for something that is already between us, that is only being, you know, activated because we subconsciously project our emotion on other people and our belief and our thought and our past experiences on other people and that triggers that emotional response. And all of this happens as fast as this. So the first thing to stop overreacting and being in charge of your emotional state is to understand that nobody can trigger something that's not inside of you. So when, you're being, when you react, the worst thing you can do is actually continue to believe that it's because of other people. If I remove the spoon, I'll never react again. But I guarantee you that you'll find somebody else, something else, or another situation to continue to stir the, the shit. So you could say that people are a mirror for what's inside of us, and that people in this perspective give us an opportunity to clear some of the dirt, to take it out, to filter it out. All those repressed negative emotions from past experience, or those beliefs, or those values, or all those things that we have bottled up in, inside of us, that needs to be released, changed, transmuted into something greater. And then, even when we go in front of that situation, or that place, or that environment, or people say that thing, or act in a certain way, once we have cleaned that dirt, even if people try their best to steal their shit inside of us, there's nothing to steal, because that emotional residue is gone. And so you remain clean in your, in your emotional state. You're no longer reacting on autopilot, so to speak. So how do we get this? How do we get to the point where, you know, what is triggering me today no longer triggers me, you know, tomorrow? Well, like I said, the first thing is really to become aware that, look, that emotional responsibility, I need to take emotional ownership for how I feel, for what's being triggered inside of me. I need to take ownership and responsibility for that because if I don't, I'm never going. I'm in denial, and I'm in blame mode, and I'm being a victim of my environment, and I'm saying that well, if I take those people, shoot them to the moon, then my life will be good. If the government is good, and if COVID is gone, and if this and this, if everything is perfect the way I want it exactly, nothing will ever trigger me. That's what you're saying when you don't take ownership of how you feel. If only my boyfriend or my girlfriend could change. But that is a, this is a recipe for misery because you can wait a long time for things outside of you to change. But the best way and the only way is to change from within. And there's an African proverb that says when the enemy outside is gone, uh, when, <laughs> sorry, when there is no enemy within inside of us, the enemy outside can do us no harm because they can trigger nothing inside of us because we're clean, our consciousness is clean. So when, here's how we go. Okay, the first step is to take ownership. Okay, so this is what happened, this is what you said, this is how they look at me, and this is how I felt. I felt angry, I felt guilty, I felt ashamed, I felt like, I felt like, oh, I wanted to punch that. Whatever you feel, own it, accept it, ask yourself, how do I really feel? Usually anger hides something else. Fear can hide some shame. So dig into your emotion, allow yourself to feel what you feel and to, to notice what is being triggered in me. And ask yourself some questions, you know, so how do I feel? What thought is associated to that feeling? What do I need to believe in order to feel this way? Why do I feel this way? Is this how I want to feel? Is this the truth? Is this the best way to feel? Am I taking this personally? So by asking yourself some powerful question, you start to get different answers. And what you're starting to do is you're starting to break this pattern because awareness is the first step to dissolve all this emotional thing. 
because by simply allowing ourselves to feel this way and no longer putting the blame outside of us, but to simply look com with compassion at what's inside of us, we can start to, to choose how we want to respond. Is this the best for me? Is this emotion serving a useful purpose? You know, and here's another good question. If, if, if you're in a situation where you feel, oh, well, you know, people are not going to change around me and I, I don't know if I can take this kind of behavior. Here's a very good question to ask yourself then. If this situation was to last forever, if this situation was to last forever, what qualities or what attitude do I need to embody to be able to transform it? What attitude or what skills or ability do I need to embody to be able to move beyond it? See, the, the answer is, is in the questions. It's about becoming more. It's about choosing more. It's about choosing more love, more compassion, forgiveness. It's about choosing that I don't want to respond this way. So ask yourself also, how would I love to, to feel differently? If I, if I was coming from a higher place, how would I see this situation differently? Because the moment you start to change things, how you see things, you're going to start to change how you feel. And step by step, what you, what you actually notice is that you're breaking that resistance between you because you're teaching yourself a new way to think, a new way to feel, a new way to respond to this stuff to this type of environment. So another thing you could do is when this is happening, right? And you, you reacted this way or it's happening, later on, you can revise this, this situation by simply in your imagination, mentally rehearse the way you wanted to react instead. And by mentally rehearse, what you're doing is actually, you're actually teaching your body, you're teaching your unconscious mind, this is how I want to hack act in this type of situation and so you can actually see yourself and feel how you would act and do and say if you were to respond in the best possible situation so i hope this makes sense guys because it is so important if we continue to allow ourselves to blame situation and people outside of us for how they make us feel we are losing an incredible opportunity to grow and as long as we don't clear this dirt we are going to continue to be continuous for the spoon and we're going to continue to attract this type of situation, people, experiences that are going to reaffirm how we feel. Because emotion is the language of consciousness, is the language, is how we communicate with the quantum field or God or universe, whatever you want to call it. And so we're inviting more of those situations to us because we don't get what we want, we get who we are and what we do and how we act and how we feel, our state of being. So apply those three steps, guys, and I guarantee you with, with time and with a little bit of practice, you'll be amazed by how much more emotionally aware you are and emotionally resistant, but above all, emotionally in control. So be well and see you in the next video.